Okay, let's get started. So let's talk about profiling Linux stuff for performance and troubleshooting reasons. Not only Linux, but also how the applications and databases interact with it and how do you measure that, right? So a bit of intro, I've been a database performance geek for only 20, uh, for over 20 years, mostly Oracle, even co-authored a, a book that got translated to multiple languages. I've worked with other engines as well, um, but I don't really claim to be an expert in the internals of, uh, of uh, Postgres or MySQL, but I, I know how a database should interact with the OS uh, and IOS subsystem and so on, so that everything would, would play along uh, nicely. Um, so, and that's, um, that's what I will talk about, uh, today, right? So, um, and, you know, since I, since my journey into Hadoop and then cloud SQL engines, uh, I have also co-founded, uh, a startup called Gluent. I was the first CEO there as well, but, uh, didn't want to turn into a, a full blown salesman. Then, um, you know, uh, now I'm more a fully technical guy doing technical advisory uh at Gluent and we have a couple of patents from there and so on and now I'm also working on a secret project and what I'm going to show you is actually a small part of that uh, secret project okay so I'll show you an intro into the Linux tasks state sampling method then we do a bunch of demos um and um uh I'll also show you how to have this uh, always on so that uh, when a problem happens in the middle of the night and you will troubleshoot it um, next morning, you can still go back in time and do a pretty detailed drill down uh, into understanding what the, what the heck happened, right? And I'll, uh, in the end, I'll have some links to my other videos of this stuff as well. So because we don't have much time, well, just uh, I'll show you what's possible, right? And I'm not going to blab too much about it, okay? So, and by the way, why do I prefer low-tech tools or, or this kind of uh, tools like you'll see, as opposed to uh, EPPF tracing or, or uh, like F-trace or, or D-trace in Linux, whatever, then, um, you know, when you do a lot of troubleshooting at different customers like I, like I do nowadays, uh, then you don't really have time to engineer a solution in their system, right? The problem is already happening. You cannot, you know, you don't have time to upgrade the kernel and you don't have the permission to upgrade anything anyway, right? So you just have to... When a problem happens, they will call you. You have to be able to start looking into it right away, and um, and you know, usually without installing any 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 heavy heavy software packages and so on, right? And sometimes you don't even have root access, right? And the solution or the idea is okay. Let's let's just use the existing instrumentation that's already enabled in Linux anyway, right? Let's use it in a, perhaps in a in, you know in a, in a more comprehensive way or in new ways, right? And uh, this instrument instrumentation is always enabled anyway, so we, we will just consume or read it uh, from these files, okay? Um, okay, so I still follow a top-down approach and I drill down into where the problem is and where the higher level symptoms point me. You know, sometimes they point me in different directions. You know, sometimes it's a memory problem, whatever. Sometimes it's not an OS problem at all or often. Sometimes it's an application problem or it's a problem in the database where an execution plan has changed because somebody dropped an index or, or optimizer statistics problem, right? And, um, and you know, uh, suddenly you're doing 10 times more IO for the same amount of work, right? So this is not something you go and solve at storage level. This is something you solve at application or SQL execution plan level, you know, do less IO then it's going to be faster, right? So I still, f I mean, I, I follow this top-down systematic approach, but um, but today's talk is not about that. You know, today's talk is about the OS and the, your database or application touch point only, right? So if your systematic troubleshooting points towards here somewhere, then, uh, then uh, you know, uh, I will show you useful tool, okay? So the traditional approach, um, or very, very old school system uh, admin, sysadmin approach is that whenever there is a problem, then uh, log into the server and check the utilization of something, right? And when the utilization is low, then you say, hey, therefore you don't have a problem, right? Well, that you cannot really do it like that, right? So, um, and you know, 30 years ago, you didn't really have better, you didn't have better tools than just the utilization tools. But nowadays in 2020, uh, you do have 
uh, quite a lot of tools and many of them are built into a proc file system okay so what i propose or what i'm using what i have used for years now myself is uh, uh, trade state analysis or task state analysis so essentially first of all you have to realize that any application any database engine out there it's just a bunch of processes or a bunch of threads inside of a process uh, that it's the same thing you know at, at high level right and now these threads or processes they will do stuff let's say the green color is that they run on cpu the blue color is that they maybe issue a synchronous io and go to sleep the os puts them to sleep um, or they voluntarily go to sleep because they cannot get some sort of a lock in, inside the application and they, vol they voluntarily go to sleep until the application wakes us up because the lock is released, right? So essentially, we will just sample, you know, every second, for example, we'll sample what all these threads are doing. You know, this is not tracing. We are not going to slow anything down. We are not going to attach to somewhere with S trace or whatever, potentially crash the program and so on. So we are just sampling the already existing proc file system, right? And this will give us a, 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 an idea that roughly what these application threads were doing, you know, at different points of time, right? And for database engines, because databases tend to do so much I.O., right? Well, mo many of them, not all, <laughs> like this guy, I mean, then, you know, this approach is pretty cool because we can measure which system call we, are, we were in, where in the kernel we were waiting, and so on, right? So this is the approach what I'm pr proposing. Let's start sampling what threads are doing as opposed to measuring the utilization or, or something like that here, right? We may still have to go to this level, um, like IO stat, if we see that everybody is waiting for IO a lot and, and so on. But, um, uh, but, but let's, let's, let's look into this approach first, okay? Um, and um, again, I'm not saying that these tools... Um, this sampling will replace everything else. Absolutely not. These other tools will be still very useful and you know used every day. Uh, so this pro pro proc file system sampling will sort of, uh, or threads uh, state sampling uh, uh, complements other tools, right? But other tools are still gonna be needed, including your database um, optimizer al analysis tools and then so on, right? Okay, so um, actually, when you run PS, you know, the most standard tool of them all, or uh, PS also reads um, uh, the proc files, right? So I'm actually going to start the demo from using PS, right? So when you run PS, you got to use PS minus capital L because otherwise you don't see all the threads, right? Otherwise you only see the process ID or the, the, the thread group leader, right? So that's the number one thing. I mean, very, very relevant for MySQL, for example. Okay. And, uh, and uh, you know, now we can choose your own columns, what to show. So here is one, um, uh, well, one of the columns is, is uh, the thread state, right? And what, where it comes from is when you run PS and you want to show the thread state or top shows the thread state as well, it samples it, um, but it doesn't really summarize it, then... Um, this comes from proc, process ID, status. And uh, if, you, if I go back to the previous slide, if, if, if you have a multi-threaded process, you have proc, process ID, task, subdirectory, and every single thread under your process is listed here as well as a, like a pseudo directory, right? And under that, you have this, uh, uh, the, the stat and status columns. And this is where these tools like PS and top will get their info. You know, they will get it from here and that my tool also reads it from here, okay? And now you have these different task states. R means you're, you are either running on CPU or you're trying to get onto CPU. You're in the CPU run queue. D usually means IO, but not always, as I will show you. Sometimes you're, when you're stuck in the OS kernel level before even getting to the IO submission part, then um, that will show up as D as well. And um, S is basically, you know, typically when you voluntarily go to sleep, you know, nano sleep and stuff like that, or waiting for some semaphore and, and so on. Um, so that's the high level overview. And, uh, you know, when you run PS and show the state, you see, uh, you can just say, okay, show me all processes in the system, but only show the state and, and the process, you know, 
command name, right? And then I don't want to see all all these thousands of lines on my screen. I want to summarize it, okay? So sort unique minus C essentially does like a group by, like, like a group by in SQL. You see, you have 27 uh, processes in this case who happen to be in sleep state by this, uh, you know, program, SSH schema, right? And this, of course, does like a, you know, uh, this is like an order by the, you know, show me the biggest number of tra processes first, and this is like limit 10. You know, it's like SQL. It's like, it's like very poor man's SQL. Unix sysadmin SQL, essentially. Okay. And here I've done the same, some, something similar uh, with capital L. That's what you should do as well. It's like, hey, uh, let's um, show all trades, you know, because you can have many trades active at the same time, you know, and, um, and show the uh, program name and also show me the weight channel. The weight channel is that is the Linux kernel function name where you are stuck. So if we are sleeping, we are sleeping in this function. This is the function which which called the OS scheduler function and put itself to sleep, right? By the way, you gotta run this with sudo on or or as root uh, if you want this column. On modern Linux versions, like you know, version 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 four and onwards, and so on, because the newer versions they hide this info from you. Um, uh, they don't want to show you everything. They don't, don't want to show you kernel memory addresses accidentally and so on. So, but when you run it as root, you will see a more full picture. Okay, so we'll get back to come back to that. And uh, and um, you know, here is like, hey, let's let's add let's add a filter. Let's add a where clause to our sysadmin SQL, right? And uh, let's only filter the R and T, only these states in R and T. So this, these two states are on Linux, which contribute to Linux system load, right? Unless, unlike classic Unix uh, uh, or uh, other Unixes, Linux includes the D state into system load as well. And you see, I have, I actually have 32 CPUs in this machine, but I already have 64 Java threads who are trying to be on CPU. Uh, you know, more and more threads who are trying to be on CPU. So this will show me an idea of, of how much demand we have for CPU usage, right? So the amount of uh, threads in the R state in VM stat would also, also you know, would show that number. So in my case, I, I this is a different benchmark. I just killed the previous commands and ran a stress test with 32 threads uh, or processes in this case. And, you know, that's the number I get. But if I have more processes who compete, who try to get, you know, onto CPU, you see the number is bigger than, uh, big, bigger than the number of CPUs I have, right? So I have more processes competing for CPU uh, than, uh, than uh, you know, uh, than I got with CPUs, right? That's why the CPU utilization is at 100%. And that's why, well, yeah, that's it. You see, I'm using where clause here again. Okay, so this is the, this is what you can do with PS, not not even having you know any extra uh, extra tools, right? So um, I've explained some reasons, you know, which take processes into these different states. So uh, sometimes you are when you do blocking I/O, well, not sometimes when you do blocking I/O, you and you wait you, and the operating system puts you to sleep, you'll you'll be in the D state. Also, when you're not trying to do the I/O, but there is a memory shortage and you're memory has been paged out and you have to you have a hard page fault then you're not going to be in an io syscall or anything but you're still going to be sleeping and waiting in the d mode because the os is doing io for you essentially right um but you know things like nano sleep or like semaphore operations these will show up uh, like uh, like sleep few takes and then and, uh, and even like when you want to read from a pipe and so on these are like interruptible system calls and they show up as s and one noteworthy thing is I/O get events. So uh, you know, MySQL is also doing uh, um, asynchronous I/O. Oracle certainly is doing async I/O, and uh, um, the the checking whether I/Os your I/Os are complete, this I/O reaping, this shows up as sleeping. So this doesn't actually contribute um, to uh, Linux system load, unlike other I/Os. Okay. I mentioned that. Um, the disk sleep is, by the way, uh, not only for disk I/O weights. You know, here is proof if you want to read uh, read uh, source code or Linux source code. Here is an example that um, uh, if we are trying to get a semaphore. Essentially, we are uh, we are 
we are um, trying to get the lock on the inode, I think. Uh, uh, and, uh, and if that fails, we are going to go to sleep. And we are going to sleep in this disk sleep mode. So essentially, we are not actually waiting for IO to complete. We haven't even gotten to the part of submitting the IO. We are somewhere stuck in a file system layer, for example, um, and, uh, and, and waiting for a lock, essentially, because of contention. And that will also show up as disk sleep. So D state usually means disk IO, but not always. And by the way, you can look into my recent blog entry about Linux system load, where I explain how is it possible to have a, um, a you know, system load of 3000 while the CPU utilization is like under 100%. It's, uh, you know, it's, not, uh, it's not even 50%. And when we drill down deeper, we'll see there are a lot of uh, Linux kernel worker processes um, for some reason, and we'll look into the reasons soon. So let's do some demos. And um, as I said, I'm just going to do a fairly quick and shallow walkthrough of what's possible and happy to answer questions later. Let's, um, let me run a couple of benchmarks. And uh, uh, so let's say, you know, this is the stat output. You know, you can use top or whatever. Let me just clear this. You can use top or whatever. And you see it's doing, uh, well, it's doing 20,000 writes per second, 8,000 reads per second. Um, and then, uh, you know, plenty of CPU idle time. So it's like only the CPUs are only like 20% utilized or something. So uh, I have plenty of idle CPU time, right? So I could say, hey, I'm just going to run top to understand what's going on. Um, you see, but top only shows you part of the picture. Top shows you the CPU utilization. And it doesn't even sample that. It just sort of every time it refreshes, it takes the total CPU usage number for that process and, it, you know, summarizes it here, right? And by the way, this is where you would, you would, uh, let's focus on MySQL for a moment. If I look into MySQL, you would only see one, one line here, right? But uh, that's when you do capital H. That's when you would see all the threads, right? So, and uh, remember I talked about that tools like PS and top also show you that uh, they, uh, they, they sample the state. They, they don't sample the CPU usage in a sense. They will, they will just take the snapshots of this ever-increasing CPU counters for, for all threads. But this S here is sampled. This is the state thread state column. And you can kind of eyeball it like that. And you see this, you see uh, some S's and most of these and a couple of R's, right? So, you know, you can kind of eyeball it from here and see that, hey, that my, my SQL is mostly waiting for this guy out. Or this D state and very little on CPU. So, so, um, but this is not the most convenient way to do that. But you can, you can totally do it if if you want to, and or use my or use the ps commands with with sort and unique like I like I showed previously. Okay. Anyway, so let's get back to the demo. So we have a bunch of activity going on. Um, uh, I have a tool called Linux Process Snapper. I'll explain the other tools in a moment as well. And um, and basically, it's an open source tool. Um, it's just a Python script, so you don't really need to like install it as an RPM or, or, or like a, a heavy, some sort of an agent. It's just a, it's just a Python script, right? Um, so, um, and you know, it can even run on very old kernels, uh, on Red Hat 5 and so on. And the basic usage doesn't even require root access, right? So I'll just run it so you'll see. So if you ever wonder why, what's going on in your system, why is the load this like this, you just run, you know, instead of PS, you run PSN. Linux process snapper. So this will take snapshots and samples of your threads and show you a summary. You see, end of story. So it's, it runs for five seconds, it samples, you know, every single thread it finds. And by default, it only shows you um, those tra those states, the summary of those states of, of uh, you know running on CPU and D, you know R and D. So if you want everything, uh, so I could just say minus A here as well. Let me just get there. And so let me just zoom in to my SQL D first, okay? So uh, I'll just say uh, um, you know let's only look into my SQL D, okay? So that's. Uh, that will show you less output. You see, um, you know, in, now in the last five seconds, 
um, 11 threads were on waiting for D state on this guy oh, and uh, less than one thread. So that's like, like yeah, on in summary, less than a hundred percent of of a single CPU were were covering, were, were utilized right by MySQL D, you know, running on CPU. And as I mentioned, you can add minus A to show all states. That's a sleeping state, and there are other, you know, for kernel threads, you have other states as well. And you see, I have a 39 threads that are sleeping in MySQL. And that's not necessarily a problem, because you may have a bunch of My MySQL connections that are idle. You know, they are sleeping, waiting for next message to arrive from some socket. You know, or, or they are background threads, uh, which don't have any work to do right now. And you can drill down into this now by adding more columns into this group by operation, essentially. So let me just say, let's add uh, uh, the system call. You got to run this particular column with, uh, with sudo because uh, modern Linux versions, they sort of hide, they don't give you the access to it um, for, they don't want to expose kernel memory addresses and so on. Anyway, so, and you see now this, um, uh, you know, like 824 uh, sleeping threads, which are doing nothing, you know, they're not contributing to Linux load. Uh, they are waiting for a few text system call, right? And um, and um, as I mentioned, you see, now we have IO get events. So these are now asynchronous IO reaping, async IO completion checks. And also these, this is a special thing to remember if you use this technique, that um, IO get events usually doesn't, I mean, it doesn't show up as a disk uh, sleep because it's it's like it's a it's a it is an interruptible, cancelable uh, call. You know, you can interrupt it by sending a signal and so on. And you see, we have a bunch of threads waiting for that, right? And if you now have a question, okay, question that which threads? You can ask add the task ID or the thread ID here as well, okay? So this will uh, you know you can do it with this with PS as well. Well, PS doesn't show you them. PS doesn't show you the system call, but um, you know it sure shows you the task ID. And you see, you could look into uh, you know the task, the, the thread ID of these interesting threads, which are you see there are they are doing asynchronous I/O in my SQLD, right? And uh, this thread ID, you can now link. You know, you go to performance schema dot threads, you can search for okay, show me where, show me all the threads where these thread IDs are you know, whatever P-Snapper just showed you, right? And you see these are these IO read and write threads um, which, which, uh, which, you, which are configurable. And ap apparently they do async IO, at least with my, my configuration, okay? So, uh, um, so I'll go back to the regular mode. You can go further in that. So let's add the, you know, the white weight channel as well. But if we are, if you're doing this, you know, work now, we're we are stuck somewhere. So first of all, if you're running on CPU, then there is a little I can show here because uh, uh, I don't, this tool doesn't do CPU profiling. You know, you, you can use perf for that and I'll mention that later. But whenever you are sleeping, you know, you wanna know where you're sleeping and why, right? For example, here we have an F-Sync, which, which uh, apparently is waiting for some XFS journal log write and um, whenever you see um, IO schedule that means that um, uh, you know we have managed to submit the IO that's great and now we are waiting you know we, we called IO schedule so that the OS scheduler would put us to sleep so that we you know uh, that we could wait until the IO is completed right but you see some weirder things here for example submit uh, block IO wait submit block IO wait means that we, this F-Sync got stuck and went to sleep because it wasn't even able to submit the I.O. It, you know, the I.O. queues at the OS level for that particular, um, you know, um, the queue depth essentially for, for that block device was already full, right? So we, we couldn't even submit the I.O. We had to wait, right? So I'm not going to go down to I.O. troubleshooting right now and then like uh, I.O. stat and so on. So that's out of scope. But, and there is more. You see, there's a p write, uh, here's a p read, and apparently, you know, we had like, you know, a few, a couple of sessions on average out of this 16 threads of whatever I have, um, who were who are waiting for a semaphore. 
So they are not, they are not even actually, they didn't even get to the point of submitting the I.O. to the block device. They are in a semaphore stuck somewhere, okay? And now you have the question, okay, what semaphore is it in the, in the kernel? What, what kind of kernel lock is it? Why are we stuck? You know, so, so this is a, this is a, this is a contention problem, right? Um, so this goes even deeper and I have separate videos about it. So I'm not, uh, I will try to not spend too much time on it. We can sample the kernel stack as well. And again, we are not using perf or BPF trace or anything. We, we just read files, pseudo files from proc file system. Okay. So, and, um, um let's see. This output is very wide, so you might want to, you know, send it to a like a text file or something like that, or use a terminal like mine, which can scroll. And uh, let's let's look into the top reason. Let's highlight this guy. So the, there is a, you know, if I add this together, there is more than one thread. There is like a close to two threads, I guess, um, which are waiting for a semaphore in Linux kernel instead of actually doing I/O, right? And now when you scroll right, let's see why what happened, right? So, file update time. I mean, the stack trace tells tells you what led you here. The W Chan column is essentially the rightmost column. This is where we are sleeping. This is where we called the scheduler to put us to sleep. But these functions before that, these are the this is the path or journey that led us here, right? And for some reason, we wanted to update the file latest change timestamp. Right, and for that we needed to do take a lock on the inode of that file in Linux kernel memory. But if you have a lot of concurrency, then others are trying to do the same thing. You see, file update time, file update time, right? So, and here is um, touch a time, you know, the touch the access time. So this is the file last ch file modification time, but this is the last access time. So. Basically, if you have a lot of, so this is where the, you know, this is why you have F data sync instead of F sync, for example, that uh, you don't want to, I mean, if you have many trades who constantly write into a file system file, they will want to, uh, they will want to um, modify the metadata, you know, last modification date, and in some cases, the last read or access date. And these modifications need to be protected by a lock in the kernel, right? When, many, not, when enough processes do it or threads do it, then you get the contention, right? I'll stop here. There is so much more to say about it, but um, in the interest of, you know, covering everything I want, I'll just, uh, you know, leave it there for now. Um, and, um, you know, but the top one here is, you see, we are using F-Sync. Okay. You know, we know, you know, depending on your configuration, MySQL uses F-Sync or InnoDB here. And uh, we're not actually doing I.O. So this guy is not submitting I.O. It's not even submitting I.O. It's not waiting for I.O.s to complete. It's, uh, it's waiting for XFS journal entries to be written to disk by a kernel thread. And we have multiple, like over four threads waiting for that instead of actually doing work. If I add it together, it's like, uh, you know, five threads in total out of 16 threads or whatever I got, right? And you go again, go all the way right. So see, the system call for this guy is f-sync, like we see from here. Here we have a case of where f, f data sync, you know, that sync only the data, but not the you know, metadata stuff. Um, even that waits. But I'll just take the top one, right? Because that's, you know, probably the most interesting. So, and yeah, okay. So this is not, uh, not too, uh, too useful to us. Um, uh, you know, basically the reason here is that, um, you know, we are essentially, our trades, our MySQL trades, which which enter the kernel here, they are not the ones who are responsible for, for syncing this to this. There are kernel worker trades who actually do this uh, um, IO or log um, XFS log flushing to disk uh, in in asynchronously and, and concurrently, right? And our trades just wait until the kernel worker trade will will um, notify us, right? So I could. Uh, either add k work here as well to see those threads as well but the link linking them together with this sampling it's that's not um, a trivial because can k workers are independent so i'm gonna sort of uh, just uh, uh, just uh, briefly show 
there is uh, that there are some kernel activity threads here as well. But I'm not gonna go deeper into that. Um, uh, just you again for brevity. So and the question is, okay, so what can we do here in this particular case? Uh, let me let me um, uh, kill this benchmark. So you see, it did about uh, what is it, hundred transactions per second. And I'm gonna do something uh, just for the sake of this demo. Just just for the sake of this demo. So I was already well. I, I guess I have a <laughs> in my in my uh, tests. I had even commented out two parameters. So this is a, like I, I switched them on and off a lot. So actually, let me let me take a little detour here. Um, just because that's interesting. You see, uh, I have enabled both parameters, f sync and o direct. Is o direct used or not? You know. So uh, I could probably look into MySQL log files or something like that as well. But um, since this is a Linux session, then let's just do. Uh, okay. So this is my MySQL DP. Let's do sudo lsof plus fg. This. So plus fg, plus fg will actually extract and tell us some extra information. It prints out some flags. You know, let's see. Uh, there is here. So you see direct. Uh, so the fact that you see there here, that means that direct, um, oh, direct was used, despite my my kind of incorrect settings here, right? But what I wanted to show you is, um, uh, or demo, is this. I'm going to... I'm gonna comment these out, these guys out, and I'm gonna just say this. I guess MySQL ignored the first one, or just you know used the last parameter that I had uncommented. So I'm gonna set this parameter to um, flush method to to direct no f sync. But before I do anything, I'm just saying that hey, I'm showing this to you as a demo for performance, for showing a performance difference, right? It's just worth saying that there are some gotchas. With this, you know, if you go to InnoDB documentation and uh, uh, you see before this version and um, you know, depend, you know, some file system. So basically, oh, direct F sync um, was not was not recommended because you know it was it didn't work correctly. Um, so and even when you have a later version, then don't just go and enable these things without really, you know, talking talking to your vendor or some MySQL expert. Or if you are the MySQL expert, then well, talk to yourself and and reason about whether it is whether in the latest versions it is a safe thing to do, and you know, but in in some versions it was enabled by default, right? Or maybe it still is. So again, I'm not I'm not a big expert in that part. So, but anyway, so it exists for a reason. Uh, so uh, let's. Um, I just want to show you how the dynamics change. So, oh, direct no f sync. This means that that um, uh, we will not call fsync, which means that we are not going to um, generate or uh, we don't, we don't, we are not going to force and generate so much um, of XFS, uh, XFS, uh, you know, journal metadata to disk either. Right. And, and there is another thing that O direct, you know, only will bypass the OS file system cache. So it will not, you know, you know, end up in this buffer in the file system cache. But Odirect does not force that the underlying disk actually flushes this thing from its cache to, to the persistent storage, right? So, you know, if you're on this EMC storage array or some enterprise storage array, it works one way. If you're using only local disks in your local server without any RAID controllers, it works a little differently. So there is, you know, basically all I'm saying is that I'm just, I want to show you how the performance numbers differ, but whether this is the right thing and safe thing to do in your configuration with your database version. That's, uh, you know, you have to do this math research yourself. Okay. Um, but it exists for a reason. So let's do a restart. Uh, stop my SQLD. And uh, well, my Postgres benchmark is currently stopped. So it, and let me just do a start again. Okay, so now we should be doing less of this f sync calls. And see, what what does the top call f sync, right? Which ended up flushing, having to flush, and it ended up having to wait until the XFS kernel worker threads had flushed and synced the journal metadata disk, right? Before continuing, so that's what they were doing. 
So let me run the benchmark again. It has like uh, 160 million rows across 16 uh, tables. So, you know, see. And you see, it already is. Let me, like, you know, maybe the first one is, you know, a bit uh, and an outlier. You see, it's like four times faster, right? And you see, the reason, one of the reasons why I wrote this tool is that, you know, when when you run benchmarks like that and something is like four times faster than the other option, then, well, you know, you don't want to just say, hey, I guess it's always faster. I mean, you can actually measure what's going on, right? So in, in my case, um, let's run the P-Snapper again. And uh, let me even, I'm going to run it uh, without the K-Stack first, just to have less information here. So, so we we get four times more work done, or or even maybe you know yeah over four times more work done, um, and and uh, you see the top kind of a uh, state now where 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 time is spent spent is actually that's a good thing. We are reading something from this. We managed to submit the I/O, and uh, you know we are we are sleeping waiting for the I/O to complete, right? So and you know there is some f sync here again. I don't know why what, what's um, where it comes from. Again, we could we could probably you know do some uh, uh, MySQL uh, stack sa sampling for that. But you know the, I mean we get over four times more work done, and also you see, and the reason why we get more done is that uh, we don't have to wait for f sync so much anymore, right? So you know I'm not even going to show the stack trace again. This is a fairly quick overview. All right, and I'll run. Um, I'll. St I'm not going to demo this more. Uh, just a quick overview. Uh, I'll run a, a Postgres benchmark. So uh, if I can run PSN, let's only look into any process or thread which which has post in it. Uh, there is something cool that Postgres does. Um, you see, we have. A, it shows like it's a postmaster process, right? And uh, but again, let's let's. I want to choose my own columns. I'm going to say. With, with small g, I'm gonna choose my own list. With capital G, you would just add add to the end of the list. I'm gonna say command line. So this is another place in in proc file system for every single thread, right? And uh, state. You know, let's use syscall as well. So now we are sampling Postgres processes. Okay, and and you see, uh, I forgot to use sudo. I'm using uh, syscall. And I forgot to reuse sudo. It tells you, hey, I tried to sample these proc files, uh, but I couldn't access any of them. So run as root or avoid restricted files like, you know, syscall or, or measure your own process only and so on. So, uh, all right. And uh, here we go. So what I, you know, this right side is the same story, like, like, uh, like MySQL. You see what kind of system calls it's using and so on. But the cool thing is, you see, uh, Postgres actually names its threads. Right, so you can actually examine from the OS. You don't have to, you don't have to list the task. You know, to get the trade ID and query query it uh, from the My, MySQL. You can actually use the command line because uh, Postgres has been instrumented. So it's actually pretty cool. You know, you could do it for MySQL as well. So, um, so I'm not very, I haven't contributed to MySQL, but uh, you know, you could name every single MySQL thread as well, right? So you'll you'll see like, hey, you know, we're, we have bunch of idle sessions, I guess, um, or idle in transaction and and uh, commits and so on. Okay, or or you can even remove the state if you don't care about the state and syscall. I mean, just just run it like that. So this shows you, uh, you know, all Postgres sessions which are either running or or disk, but doesn't show you the sleeping ones, right? Or which are in the, but uh, like sleeping as far as the OS can tell, right? Um, okay. And yes, so this this is uh, even though, even though Postgres is a, like a multi-process engine, then um, you can do this thing on Java even and multi-threaded things as well. You see, it's actually a pretty new blog entry of mine. Um, you see, I'm using the same trick that I already showed. You run PS on the Java, you know, pro program and do the group by and you know, top ten limit top ten and so on. And you see, uh, Java names its threads as well, right? And you even see the you, you see the uh, you know uh, garbage collection threads, and uh, in my case I, I use the benchmark tool for Oracle data generation, and the developer has named threads as well. These threads for generating addresses 
and um and then uh you know and you see there's a bit of garbage collection activity as well okay so that's pretty cool so this uh, you know so this uh, hopefully helps i have a couple of um uh additional slides here i'll upload the slides to slide share as well you know here is an example of running a, a, a piece snapper on just a process a specific peed and you see it's a dd command and it looks like it's bottlenecked on the target side you see 79 percent of time we were waiting for a system call right against this file right i forgot to share the file name thing you see you can run mysql oh, sorry psn minus p mysql uh, and uh, i think you gotta be sued over that and let's also add file name right so those system calls that only take one argument or you know one file as an argument i can show some system calls like async io submit i cannot show that file name because i cannot extract it from the proc file system but you see it shows you even like against which file we did we did we tried to do the io and uh, i have a uh, the latest version of psnapper has like a file name sum here as well and you really probably want to know this in the context let's put the sys call here as well because you really want to know whether you're reading or writing right so the sum just replaces any digits with with a star so you will get a better summary you see apparently the heaviest files you know what the trade our trades are spending time on uh, you know is this guy you see f syncing is still used but on the log file bin log and you know this is from our um, this is a fairly recent improvement in uh, mysql right so you have this double buffer writer uh, or double block writer whatever it was called so so you wouldn't have to do all this io against a single system table space and end up waiting for this semaphore contention and so on so they are improving scalability here okay all right so um all right and the last thing to show is um i kind of it's the same thing but over time so if you go to the xerox tools i have a whole video and a lot of exp exp uh, Explo what is it? Explo <laughs> you know, it's a long document, right? And before that, let me just run it. You see, so uh, this is a tool which is designed to capture every second. It runs every second and captures by default the threads which are in R or D state, right? And you and you will write this into an output file. I mean, right now this by default, I just run next capture. It will show it this on the screen. But if you say output dot, so now this will create an hourly file. For every hour, it creates a new file with a new name, and you will have a full history, right? Okay, so you see it created a an hourly file, and it's a it's like a pure CSV. So and you, you can go wild with it, right? You can do whatever you want. I mean, put it into a database or run a DBA style or another sysadmin SQL against it. Um, and um, you know, or or use it whatever way you want. You can feed it to Grafana or whatever. So I think the high system load, right? So if you have high system load uh, on Linux, and you have this X capture enabled, you see, you can come into the office next morning when you need to like uh, go back in time and troubleshoot this thing, and uh, uh, you'll you'll just do it. It's again. DB, it's a sysadmin SQL, you know, select everything from this file where timestamp is this, right? And by the way, only take this, you know, these columns, select only these columns, and then do a group by, you know, by all these columns. And by the way, show show me the top 20 or whatever, whatever uh, you know, lines there are, right? And, uh, and even, you know, I'm actually taking a whole minute here. I'm zooming into one minute. I had a spike during some minute. And I would probably, I didn't have 20, 30,000 trades in this mode. I should probably divide this by 60 because I'm sampling every second, right? And I'm looking into a whole minute. I should probably divide, not probably, I should divide this by 60. You get the, how many trades I had, you know, um, on average uh, on in this mode, um, you know, every second, right? So um, you can read more about that. And uh, if you look into my blog about this or if you go to zero x tools 
then you, you even see there is a tool called Visidata, not written by me, but a tool called Visidata, and uh, and you will see what it does. See, it's like a, a pretty cool uh, text file analysis tool which allows you to do group buys and whatever, and even uh, briefly show you like uh, you know like histograms which kind of a state took the most time and so on. So that's a uh, tool is called Visidata. So that's pretty cool, right? And uh, talking about tools, so there is a uh, this is not a, a public tool well yet anyway. It's kind of in a stealth mode, not by me. But uh, but built by a friend, and uh, and here is an example of uh, um, you know zero x tools and this this x capture data, um, you know it's already visualized right, and you'll see this it's running Oracle and it's running Postgres on the same machine it's running Java and you'll see from OS level you will get a breakdown of what's going on who is using you know who is spending time in your OS and you can even zoom in to specific processes or. You know what? What were the top system calls? You see some sort of a spike here. Let's say this is a spike of some sort. What was it? You know what kind of uh, system calls were the top, uh, or what were the top number of threads in different system calls? So we apparently were writing, and um, I think there is a Postgres um, version as well that you have a um, Postgres. Uh, this data comes from inside Postgres. You know some of you may recognize these events. But if you go down, there is a like there is the similar sampling is done from at the OS level as well, and um, uh, you see these these are the Postgres names, and you'll even see that there was there was a trade which was using CPU mostly, and you see what system calls they were on and so on, right? So so what I'm what I'm basically showing you here is that um, mm, sampling trade states. You know, going beyond just whether we are on CPU or not. You know, looking into system calls, weight channels, and even the kernel stacks, right? That will uh, it will help you a lot. And I I did not have to install any kernel modules, enable traces, upgrade nothing. You know, this works in Red Hat Five as well. This approach you won't have as many columns, but starting from Red Hat Six clones and so on, you'll it, it's gonna be pretty pretty powerful. And in some cases, you don't even need to use, you know, you don't even need to need root access, right? So, um, and yeah, so um, this X capture you just saw, while the piece snapper is written in Python, I wrote X capture in C um, because, you know, for efficiency reasons. And uh, it's like 400 lines with all the comments and so on. And it doesn't have any dependencies with, or agents or anything else you have to install just uses the standard Linux, you know, libc features that are already there. Okay, and it's open source, you can ex extract it any way you want. Um, I didn't have time for this, um, but there, there's nothing, not much um, um, to say about the CPU, or there is not much of an invention. But when you run perf, you can actually run, schedule perf to run, and sample at one hertz, and keep, keep it uh, running forever, and uh, I think you will see from here. You see this run X CPU. What it really does is it runs perf. It says sample once per second, right? And by the way, every every minute switch output to a new file. So you'll have a bunch of old bunch of files in here, right? You might want to compress them and so on, but but I've done things where I have to go back to the previous. You know, weekend or whenever, whenever a spike or some sort of sort of a CPU hiccup happened, and say, okay, let's run perf report on this file that was created on that particular uh, timestamp. So I'm I'm zooming into just one minute of of time, and indeed I can you know, already see what's going on, right? Or uh, or where you look next. So you know, no need to guess. So um, my P snapper and X capture they measure thread states. And they are useful for sleeping, you know, when you're stuck and sleeping as well. But perf in this mode only samples when you are on CPU, right? So there are these two worlds, and both are uh, covered by different tools. Okay. All right, and uh, that's that's it. So I have uh, lots of plenty of blog entries about Linux, a lot of Oracle stuff. <laughs> I have a lot long hacking session videos about these same things. A Zero X tools live here now. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, send emails uh, for with questions or, or in, in the Slack channel as well. And um, 
And by the way, I have upcoming events as well. I do online training, not only for Oracle troubleshooting, but also Linux troubleshooting as well. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, well, let's get into questions.